Patrick, I first met you, uh, I think it was around 25 years ago, um, when I bought uh, one of your wonderful works on the secondary market in an auction. Uh, I cheekily found out where you were and uh, asked you if you could restore it. And you very kindly did so and didn't even charge me for it. So thank you for that. Patrick, uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of viewers will be really, really excited to see your studio, how you work, the, all the different works that are available, all the different works that, that, that um, we sell together and that, that indeed you sell all around the globe. Um, you've, you've moved into Shoreditch. Uh, could you tell us when you moved in and why this particular location? Well, I moved in, Alan, just about the day you rang me. I moved in 25 years ago, or if you like, quarter of a century ago. And when we came, we came on bonfire night in November, and in December the first bar opened. So it wasn't a living place then, it was empty. It was like the Bermuda Triangle, really. If you remember driving around, there was nobody here. But uh, there had been a lot of artists here already, but I found this large... Um, ex-industrial space. It was where they made, um, oddly enough, for the furniture trade, they made varnish and polish and paint, you know, and I'm, I'm still in the wall furniture trade. Paintings are kind of wall furniture, and I'm making furniture for the home even now. Well, I think, I think it's a little bit more than that, but uh, yeah, you may want to think about it that way. And tell me, Patrick, how has the, um, how has the studio expanded over this quarter of a century? Well, it's grown in the sense that I came here, I had one assistant, I had Martin Kingdom who came with me. And one of the big expansions was Photoshop because if you remember Roy Ackerman said to me, I want to do a Venice themed restaurant. And I said, I can't do a retrospective of Venice. It would take me three months to draw it out. But uh, maybe 20 or so years ago, Photoshop came along and that was my most useful new member of, uh, of the faculty because you can scan say Venice or Andy Warhol or uh, whoever and you can adjust them in perspective and then you can trace them and paint them. So that was the, the major development that happened because until then I could only work with shall we say Mondrian or Rothko or very simplistic abstracts or doors and scenery and so on and projected things but the, the great new worker was was photoshop like i mean like most people patrick i would i remember the exact time that i saw the very first work of yours the reverse perspective the works that you did and you know obviously you, you kind of you, you don't know if your eyes are deceiving you you don't quite know what's going on because nobody nobody's explained it to you and you think you know, sometimes you walk by and you're feeling a little bit nauseous or you think maybe you had a bit too much to drink. Um, but how did you arrive at this concept? How did you, where did it come from? Um, how did it develop? Where, what was the inspiration for it? Well, it's, uh, I guess it's a long story. One inspiration that I've referred to often is during the war, when the Germans were trying to kill me, I was hiding in what was then called the glory hole in a cottage in Crewe under the stairs. So as a child, uh, Oscar Wilde, by the way, said some of us are lying in the gutter, but others of us are looking up at the stars. But I was uh, lying in the glory hole, but I was looking up at the stairs, not the stars, and the stairs were in reverse. So maybe it was that childhood inspiration. But it was also the inspiration of... Uh, of a surrealist, if you like. I wanted to do things differently. Do you know, we, we surrealists admire the fur cup and saucer. We, we, we like the uh, flat iron with the nails down it. We like things that are contradictory. And I thought to myself, in 1964, uh, 50 nearly years ago, why not make a room that sticks out? And the first one I made in Leeds was a sticking out room and now I make, if you like, a number of uh, sticking out rooms or an array of sticking out rooms. So that was one inspiration, was to just do something the opposite or daft. And are there any particular theories that inspired you or helped you refine this technique? Was there anything 
you know, was there a mathematical equation? Was there anything like that that, that, that kind of guided you through this or, or this was a, a bit of trial and error? A lot of it is trial and error, Alan. That, that you, I've learned a lot about what you need to know about lighting and what you need to know about, if you like, lines that come through from one thing to another. But it's really a matter of um, visual psychology. It's in, it's in your brain that you decode the images that you see. And then again, it's in your body as you walk about. It's called proprioception. Your feet tell you you're moving left to right in front of a reverspective, and your, your eyes tell you you're moving right to left. And so if you go down, you become taller, and the whole one reversal of sticking something out ends up in a number of reversals. So I've been given a doctorate in science by uh, King's College London really? University for the, my work, if you like, in the psychology of perception. Amazing. And you, you, in many of your works, you pay homage to some of the world's best-known artists, best-known painters. Um, uh, for example, in your, in your uh, new work, Her Eyes on the Horizon, uh, we see Warhol, we see Hearst, we see Herring. Um, which artists have been the greatest influence on you personally? For me personally, as I mentioned before, it was the Surrealists. The, the ones that got me was uh, Magritte and to a certain extent Dali and Duchon and Man Ray. And also, of course, Escher, who was a um, master of illusion. So I got interested in, in illusion. But uh, all, some of these artists, I love them. And I did one time teach where uh, Damien was uh, studying at uh, Goldsmiths. And I have met uh, Liechtenstein and Warhol, and I was friendly with Keith Haring. So sometimes it's people you know, and sometimes people you like, or sometimes people you don't like. In this case, I've got Signac, the Impressionist or the Pointillist, who was a very early adherent of pop art with his kind of circusy picture of Felix Fennel. So it's, it's, it's a mixture of things. And I, would, I want to say as well that Paul Clay was a great influence, because if you remember, he was a great one for geometry. He would do a lot of lines and triangles and then see it as a fleet of yachts. And I've always been interested in geometry and making it into something. And if we move on to some of your best loved works, which are the Venice scenes, um, how, exactly, how exactly do you create that depth of changing perspective in those works? Because they're incredibly detailed. Um, is, it, is it much more difficult? And also, how did you arrive at doing those works? Is it, is it mostly because of the Photoshop? Yeah, the Photoshop, you couldn't do it without the Photoshop, and it was Roy Ackerman's suggestion. But the beauty of Venice is that it's only a certain height. It's four or five stories high because it's on pillars banged into the mud of the lagoon, isn't it? So there, it's a consistent height, which is useful to me. And it's hugely detailed because it's Baroque or classical architecture. And it's on the lagoon, so it flows. It moves from side to side. There's various reasons. And also partly because it's a cliché that everybody loves. Uh, perspective by now is a cliché. It's a given thing. I've worked with rainbows, which are a cliché. And some of these artists are so well known that they're clichéd. But you can revive a cliché and make it live again. Uh, quoting Oscar Wilde again, he's, he wrote that uh, work was the curse of the drinking classes. And by reversing the cliché, uh, drink is the curse of the working classes. So I, I've reversed the cliché of perspective and I've uh, taken on Venice and rainbows and some other things like that and kind of revived them. And if you compare um, your earlier works from the, from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and you compare them to the current works now, um, how, how do you think you've developed? How, how do you think the technique has developed? How do you think you've developed as an artist? What, um, what do you think has changed over the last 20, 30, 40 years? I think one, one way of putting it, which I've learned, is I used to do pictures which told you things. So I would have a cloakroom ticket that said a two on it, but the words one were written on it. 
all that sort of thing that are contradictory. But now I let you experience the, the paradoxical, the contradictory, the strange, the tricky way. So I think at first I told you things and now I let you experience things, which I think is a better way to experience. We want to experience art, don't we, to join into it, to partake of the artist's vision. And I, I think now that you can partake of it with your body as well as your mind, it's been a, it's been a terrific uh, excitement and I'm very lucky, I think. I think we all are, looking at these. Um, are there any scenes that you've been working on recently that, uh, uh, that, that kind of embrace the new techniques that you've, been, that you've been using? Well, you know, one of the new things we've been talking about earlier today is the Banksy theme. And uh, here we are in... Very in He's very popular and he was very, very ditch. He was a Shoreditch artist and did a lot of his work around here. And eventually, it took me about 15 years, I noticed they were there and they're on walls. And I paint walls. We're in a room now with walls and these are more or less all walls. And I realised that uh, walls suit me very well. Venice is all walls, art galleries are walls. And, uh, and he, he's a graffiti artist who works on walls. So that's been a, a great inspiration really to have brick walls and cement walls and uh, corrugated walls and so on. So I, I've gotten uh, more and more interested in uh, the walls. They're all behind one of these walls. If we are. Um, you, made, you made your first reverse perspective paintings in the 1960s. Um, what do you think has given you uh, such an enduring relationship with, with your collectors, the, the people that, you know, who, have, who have been collecting throughout this time and have stayed with you throughout this time and remain collectors with you throughout this time? That's a difficult question. I, I, like, I like to think that the, it, it's, it's my role to, uh, to just stimulate, you know, to, to, to uh, push and pull at people's perceptions and imagination. And I think that some people are interested to see who will I take on next. You know, I, I can see out of the corner of my eye a uh, Mondrian and uh, a camera and a pile of presents and some crates and things. And I think that uh, one of the things I try to do is find new imagery. Do you know, I was thinking of doing a, another clown painting. And you've got to find new imagery and you also have to find new shapes, you know, very pointed shapes or cut-in shapes or something. So I'm, I'm always trying to think of something new for my audience, if you like. Got it. Um, do you think your range of works from the originals to the, to the kind of slightly newer multiples that you've embraced over the last few years have helped with the accessibility and have also helped increase uh, the collector base that you have? I think it's very interesting to be, um, like me, an international artist. It didn't occur to me again for many years till I was in my 40s or something that I could be because art is a lingua franca, it applies to everybody, Every can, everybody can read a picture. And luckily for me, the, I started doing the multiples maybe 20 years ago, and they have been all over the world. There isn't, I don't think there's a continent they haven't gone to, and there isn't a city that they aren't sold in, and I've sold maybe 4,000 of them. So they're, they're all out there, and that's very appealing to me to be able to meet people uh, virtually all over the world. Got it. And tell me, Patrick, on, on one of these larger works of art that's completely hand-painted, how long does it take to, to complete such a work? Well, the first thing you've got to do is make the shape. So this great big wooden shape is made by Jason and then is painted white, usually by me, and then I probably did that cut in some refinement of it. I did that, I imagine. And then uh, Kirsty would have painted it all white and she would have made the frame in readiness for the finished thing. And then the great Donna would have uh, all these uh, things, the Johns and the Lichtenstein, she would scan those in and then she would adapt them in Photoshop to the right shape. And then we'd take it upstairs to uh, Ioana or Justin or Ian or Zoe or somebody, Liff, upstairs, and they would trace it on and then they'd paint it all in oil paint and then we'd frame it up and make various changes. 
So going through all those stages, it's about three months one way or another. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of work. And could you show us one or two things that you're working on at the moment? Yes, there's, um, uh, over here is the uh, Venice, uh, a Venice collage. That's in an edition of five. So we um, collage the Venice bits on, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, lift painted the reflections in the lagoon and the end. So it's part painted, part collaged. And then I've got a new um, multiple, which is uh, robotic over there. It's my second robot, somewhat autistic, isn't he? The robot, he walks around like that. And uh, there's a third uh, that we're going to show you in the new Banksy, aren't we? The Banksy multiple that's called uh, Banksy with an eye. It's at my third uh, Banksy multiple that's uh, flying off the shelves as we speak. I'm riding on uh, Banksy's coattails, oh, I think. Well, I think he'd be thanking you too. All that is left for me to say, Patrick, is thank you very, very much for your time. It's always lovely spending time with you. And thank you for inviting us to your studio and showing us the wonderful work. Thanks for asking me, Alan. I've it's enjoyed a pleasure. it. Thank it's a you. pleasure. Thank you.